Alright, hey guys, this is Infinite Flash here. Today I'm going to be talking about a game that played, was played yesterday in the Sinkfield Cup. This is going to be a quick game, but I think I'm just going to show you briefly what happened in today's game with Nakamura, um, Nakamura playing Topolov. Topolov was playing white and Nakamura was playing black. We had a game, where the game started with uh, Rui Lopez, very, very standard stuff with, you know, this kind of stuff that's every, every mostly every chess player has ever seen with Castling and the normal move is bishop e7 here, but Nakamura chose to play b5 first, and I think uh, knight takes e4, followed by let's say knight e5, knight c5, and d5 is the normal main uh, line. Uh, what do you say? What is this called? I, for I forgot what it's called. Uh, open Roy Lopez, but first bishop c5 was played. I think this is called the Archangel's attack, and or opening, or whatever it is, and we kind of get this normal setup very quickly. And, you know, both sides are playing their own kind of developing moves. A4 is allowed to design kind of open this file. And, you know, black can play bishop b7, but he just played another reasonable move to, with rook b8. And a takes b5 is reasonable at some point. But, uh, you know, white decided to play h3 first. Castles, all these moves look very reasonable. White pushed in the center with d4, trying to, you know, gain a tempo on this bishop. And put his own, you know, just have these two center pawns. This is kind of nice for, kind of nice for white. Uh, you know, black can take here, but I think black's move is really reasonable. This should be six leaving the center here, and white doesn't really want to push d5 because of knight e7, and he has this kind of closed king's Indian structure at, in this kind of position where you can see the knight moving here, g6, f5, knight g7. Bishop here is kind of supporting that, that well, and you can see that this is not kind of ideal for, uh, for white to play. So in this position, uh, instead of that, white just continued with rookie one supporting uh, the pawn here, and we had bishop e7, kind of a developing move towards this side of the board, um, across this diagonal. And, you know, it's kind of just, it's kind of better here than, say, if it was on c8, where it had to go to d7, c, or e6, where, you know, especially e6 is running in d5, but, you know, move like bishop d7 kind of seems off to me as, you know, that doesn't really seem consistent with what white black has played here. Bishop d b7 seems more active. Next, white just to open the a file with a takes b, a takes b, a takes b again. And now uh, white doesn't really want to play knight d2 because this pawn is hanging. And as we've seen, he doesn't want to push the pawn in here in the center. So he's got to develop this knight to an unusual square, such as knight a3. And in this position, black decided to resolve the tension in the center with e takes d4. White recaptured with the pawn, maintaining his pawns in the center. Black applied a little bit more pressure on the four pawn, and in this position, um, oh, actually, I think rook e8 is pretty reasonable. Sorry, that's not what was played. Rook e8 is pretty reasonable, but Black first decided to play knight a5, and, you know, there's this tactic with knight takes b5, knight takes b3, queen takes b3, knight takes e4, giving a black a uh, very, very good position, and that's why it's not really recommendable for uh, White to play knight takes b5. He has to retreat the bishop here first, and after bishop c2, defending the four pawn, as this was attacked twice, and the knight did a good job of uh, kind of uncovering this discovered attack. There, uh, white, black decided to continue, let's say, pushing the knight, pushing white back with b4, forcing the knight to go to b1. Rook e8, getting a little bit more pressure on the e4 pawn. White developed his knight here to, let's say, defend the, the pawn here. Black played uh, kind of a deflection move, relying on the fact that if white takes on b3, then e4 would be hanging, such as, you know, a move such as knight bd2 is just running in the knight takes e4. Or, you know, knight takes b3 first, bishop takes b3, and, you know, uh, I think knight takes e4 is giving black a very, very good game. And, and you know, um, you know, this isn't that good for... Uh, good for uh, white in general. So he decided to pre preserve the bishop, protecting the e4 pawn here and kind of keeping his options open. And, you know, in this position, um, black continued with queen d7, connecting the rooks here, kind of keeping the queen's options open, possibly going to b5, and always putting a little bit of pressure here. And you can see, you know, the queen, everything is really, really nice for black in this kind of position. And although, you know, white has the center too and pretty potentially good pieces here, he's got to find a pretty good move in this kind of position. And in this position, he really played actively, but although, you know, actively doesn't mean the best position will arise from that. In this position, um, I think white should probably just play rook a3 and try to put a little bit of pressure on the b3 pawn, although it's not so clear how to, why, um, 
I mean, it's not so clear how to proceed from here. In the game, you can't really blame Topalo for uh, playing for what he did. He played e5, trying to open up this bishop, and his idea connected with uh, the pawn e5 was that after pawn takes e5, which is not what Nakamura played, pawn takes e5, forcing the knight to move. Black played knight h5, going for knight f4, possibly, knight g3, possibly, relying on the pin right over here. Uh, against that, his idea was connected with knight g5, putting pressure on the h5 pawn. It, the knight was hanging after it had to move here. And his other idea was e6, trying to smash open the position and relying on his bishop pair to become useful in this kind of position. Unfortunately, this just concretely does not work at all. Um, in this position, black mid, I think Nakamura just played g6, defending the knight, but in this position, black can play bishop takes f2. Uh, kind of a neat tactical shot with the idea that king takes f2 is met by queen d4 and you know there's not really a good square for the king to run given that these normal squares are taken away and king f1 is met by bishop h6 so rook e3 is forced and i think black just takes the pawn and you know the knight and the rook are hanging so white has to really defend the the rook here he decide he can play bishop h7 first it doesn't really matter king f8 Queen f3 defending the rook and black can just take the knight here, you know, followed by in this kind of, kind of continuation with good pressure along the file. Uh, really good knights here and surprisingly really good knights on the on the rims with you know that are controlling these side squares such as f4 and c4 and a nice bishop. Another rook coming to the file putting pressure. Black is clearly better and he has good chances to win the game. You know, instead of uh, king, but if black, white doesn't play bishop takes uh, king takes f2, he can also play like a move such as king e1. And you know, after uh, let's say a bishop takes e1, taking grabbing the material, queen takes h5, h6, uh, defending against the mate threat here. Um, I think uh, bishop h7 is met by king h8. And after let's say white might take the bishop, it doesn't really matter in this case. You know, black probably just you know takes on e5 and is doing really really well um, and you know uh, I think white is actually losing material in this kind of line probably not king takes e1 probably like knight e4 or something and bishop takes knight chopping off that piece bishop takes e4 bishop b4 and you know black is doing excellently in this kind of position I don't think uh, white has really too many problems here um, you know he's up in exchange here too so I mean white his, his attack is going to be defused in my opinion and let's see knight takes up sevens probably left with king g8 and it's already not so clear what to do for for um for white here i mean this knight's trapped actually and that's kind of weird and you know he's struggling you can look at that in more depth if you'd like but i'm more focused on um you know that nakamura missed this opportunity to really get something in this kind of position and he played a g6 instead of defending the knight, but in retrospect, this isn't such a great idea. Another move that black could have played was knight f4, getting some pressure on the queen side, but king side, I mean, and but white can just play knight df3, and it's not so clear what what black does in this kind of position. If I'm rushing, it's um, I apologize for that. Um, so he played g6, and now he played this e6 move, kind of opening the position up, and after f takes e4, his idea was. Queen g4 applying pressure on the e6 pawn and activating his pieces here, potentially moving the knight here, knight here to you know open up the bishops, get the knight to the other knight to e5, and relying on this rook to really put in kind of annoying factor in Black's position. He rerouted, he just moved the knight back here because it wasn't doing much, and the queen went to h4, and you know in this position this knight's kind of loose, and you know he doesn't really want to move the knight as this kind of vacates the this diagonal open and leaves that diagonal vacant, I mean, and, you know, by moving the knight, there's always these kind of sacrifices on g7 and h, g6 and h7, so he just brought the, you know, the rook back to defend the pawn, to defend the knight, and the problem here, I guess, in this position is that the, let's see, the natural rook here is, you know, met by, um, I think it's rook e6 is probably met by just rook here, and white doesn't really have anything better than, um, Probably just taking the rook here, and after rook takes, although this knight is loose, there's not really such an obvious way of playing this. Black has rook e1, and there's probably some dangerous threats and random tactics with bishop takes h, bishop takes f2, bishop takes g2 in this kind of position. I mean, this isn't really that important as you know. Black is doing probably better in this position, and 
after you know allowing him to be like let's say activating his pieces with rook e8. Um, white doesn't really want to take there on e6 just yet, and Mustach's knight takes e6, probably running into let's say knight g4 at some point or some kind of knight move, maybe like knight h5 to let's say uncover this attack on the f2 pawn here, given that this is hanging with kind of this rook and bishop here coordinating there. And you know white played a really really safe move in this position with knight here to kind of meet knight g4 by you know since I'm blocking this file here it's really really safe. And you know black centralized the bishop here and you know this seems kind of natural over protecting the pawn here and you know white continue with this point of knight d5. This is kind of what I mentioned earlier is kind of a very very nice position here. You can always think about these kind of sacks here. Black uh, brought his queen to g7 to kind of protect these pawns in some way and I mean, it's pretty tough for uh, black to play in this kind of position. White just continued with bishop d2, re kind of moving his bishop to this square. Uh, in this position, black can definitely consider knight h5 when it's already very, very unclear how you defend the, the f2 pawn. And probably in this position, white's kind of forced to play a move such as knight gf7 when, you know, black is certainly fine after you know, this kind of position with the material amount such as that. And black has a pretty decent position here. Sorry about that skip, guys. Let's see if I can go back. So probably not there. And in this position, black just, you know, this knight's hanging, so he has to move it. So he decided to just go, you know, back here with knight c6. And, you know, after this, uh, white ended up taking here, which, you know, probably is an, probably a decent move. And uh, bishop takes c6 was played and you know probably instead of bishop takes here he could have played it you know knight h5 gaining you know this threat again and I think the lines were pretty pretty interesting after knight h5 and um, bishop takes h2 what is it 97 is this right I cannot remember from my life what were the lines um, let's see probably it's a uh, bishop c3 and um, bishop takes f2 queen takes f2 rook takes f2 94 to block this diagonal from the, the rook hanging. This is quite an extraordinary position where the queen is left, where white's kind of down this queen for the material, but um, there's no way, good way to really save it. And okay, first of all, you can't really take the queen because um, because I have rook g2 and knight g3 checkmate no matter what you do if you take my queen. Um, so, you know, probably uh, takes, takes, 94. Black has to capture here and after bishop takes, and let's say a move such as, what, queen f8 maybe? Queen f8, um, to defend the rook down f2, knight takes b8 to, let's say, to capture the rook, queen c5, relying on this pin, and, I mean, I'm, you can't really can't take the knight because of rook a8, obviously, and um, in, this, in this position, I mean, queen takes here, rook, rook a8 is pretty bad for uh, black, takes, takes, uh, kind of uh, this, let's say, pin on this rook, kind of dis threatening a discovery of any kind. Um, so white just got out of this, and you know the position remains really unclear. And because even though um, white has like three pieces for the queen, this queen and rook are really active. And you know you, if this queen gets to g3, it's very very dangerous for uh, for uh, white to play. The position is pretty unclear, really. And you know that was certainly. Uh, worth playing for black instead of the game continuation which does not look good at all he in the game he just played bishop takes c6 and you know after this move i think after bishop c3 getting in this annoying then black already has very serious problems and you know moves such as knight e6 are already worth considering although in this position instead of uh bishop c3 if knight e6 i think the very very nice tactical shot with knight g4 is doing okay is okay for black as the natural move knight g7 is probably just met by um, bishop takes f2, queen takes f2, rook takes f2, now bishop e4, kind of getting this diagonal as we saw the knight coming there earlier to defend that, and this is quite a substantial threat. So he has to play bishop e4, bishop takes e4, rook takes e4, rook takes d2, and you know black is doing quite all right as you know he'll be uh, on even material, and at the end of these lines he'll likely have an extra pawn, although it's not so clear how he converts it, uh, or makes use of it, let's say. Very, very uh, sharp tactics are kind of present in this position. And of course, instead of knight takes g7, uh, probably you have to play bishop e3 and, and try to defend f2. But I mean, after bishop e3, uh, probably just black just captures it. And after pawn takes 
bishop here. Um, probably black can just capture here. And, you know, the position is kind of crazy, really, with these kind of tactics um, in the mix where I think if h takes g, this rook is hanging. So black, white kind of relies on um, these kind of tactics and being in the position. I think queen takes a1 is met by bishop g6, I think. Um, I mean, you can check that out. I'm pretty sure that that's the case. Uh, let's see. I, yeah, that's probably right, actually. Okay. Well, anyways, that's a bit of a digression. Um, so going back, bishop c6, and white didn't really want to play this and decided on bishop c3 along this diagonal, and it's much safer, really, to play this position than the other. Black decided to play e5 and just give jettison the pawn in this position, and, you know, after this... Um, White just decided to take it, obviously, and it looks pretty natural, and then activate his knight here. And, you know, there's not really a rook, good rook discovery because black has knight takes c3. So he brought the queen over here to, once again, renew this threat of, you know, the, any of these kind of rook discoveries with the bishop attacking the queen here. So now black got out of, black decided to take the pawn first, I mean, and then, um, you know, white has to move the king over here. And after this, inserted this move, rook b4 with the idea of, of, if that the bishop takes, then this rook is hanging, and this is what happened in the game, and there's not really a better move as knight takes c3 is always in the mix, followed by the queen taking the rook here. So after this, white just took the rook here with bishop takes b4, and now um, after queen takes c5, I think uh, white applied the more pressure on this pin all across this diagonal, and definitely with rook a5 and rook d1 coming, um, White is clearly on top here in this kind of position. Um, a move such as, and also uh, White's also threatening Queen takes c6, obviously. So there's not really a good way of kind of defending this position. We can kind of understand Nakamura's decision to defend the bishop with rook f6 in the game, but I think a move such as rook d8, Queen takes c c6, a tough move to play by the way. Queen takes g5 and rook a5 is um, still good for White, but you know maybe Black has some sneaky chances with moves such as knight e3 threatening um, a little trap like that with, you know, force mate actually. Quite a quite a weird way to win the game even. And that's a smother mate. That's a, maybe he should have played this kind of line with uh, rook d8 and, um, you know, obviously uh, after knight e3 black, white shouldn't do this uh, capture. He probably should play rook a8 and stop rook d1 as, as well. And, you know, in this kind of position, White's probably doing good. It's just he has to defend a little bit. You can check that out for yourselves, guys. I don't really, um, I was going to cover the games today, so I don't really have time for a um, really, really in-depth analysis here. Um, so obviously uh, that wasn't played. Maybe that was his best chance. Rook f6 instead was played, and after this position, White Topov played just Rook d1, applying more pressure here, and... I mean, black is a, black can't really defend this anymore, and I mean, I think he's just dead. And um, let's see, I think what was a, uh, I mean, queen takes g5 might be the best move, but he played king g7 and just dropped uh, the piece here. I think uh, after let's say queen takes g5, uh, um, probably just bishop takes d5 with the idea of taking with the rook and a discovered check and a, simultaneously attacking the queen. White wins huge material here. So that obviously didn't happen, and you know after this, um, you know Black was kind of annoyed and got got out of this with the got out of the pin of this knight, but you know White just captured here, t took there, Queen takes d5, and uh, Black actually just resigned here. Um, overall, pretty pretty exciting tactical fight here, but overall I think it's disappointing for Nakamura, especially since he missed this Bishop takes f2 opportunity to really get a, acquire a good position here. Um, I think he was only looking at moves such as g6, kind of defending the king side, or, you know, trying to keep the position together. And, um, you know, with all the pieces on the back rank, you've got to definitely look for uh, bishop takes f2. I'm not sure where he went wrong or where he miscalculated, but, you know, missed opportunities like that cost it in the game, and he unfortunately lost the game. Um, a good attacking game by Topolov, taking a risky decision here, but it's also a nice win for him to come back from those first two games where I think he uh, lost them in quite a annoying fashion and quite embarrassing fashion I mean um, anyways guys I'll be coming around four today later on and I'll be posting those games later
this is infinite flash shining out. 